I love FIPS. <laughs> I'm an advocate for FIPS because I think it's just a fabulous facility. It's just a gem of a place in Pittsburgh. You walk in and you just feel refreshed and tranquil as you walk through all this lushness and greenness and flowers and light and air. We are a place that showcases gardens and the beauty of nature. We connect people to nature every day, so why shouldn't we really be doing our part to support the environment? I believe in what they do, and I believe in how they do it. They keep leading the way in this area of green building. It inspires other people. FIPS is a leader in the botanical garden world for green buildings and operations, and it's exciting to be a part of this wonderful history of this organization and to be involved in helping to transform it to a model of sustainability for the next century. One hundred years ago, people thought there was no limit to the amount of energy we could use or the amount of pollution we can produce. In fact, people thought we were going to conquer nature. It's completely ironic in some ways that you've got an organization that started by bringing Exotica into places where they never belonged. Something completely environmentally inappropriate. Here we are now, a little over a hundred years later and we're completely thinking about a totally different way of operating. In fact, we're seeing the conservatory as a place to help us connect with nature and reconnect us with what we've lost over the past hundred or so years. In 1993, management of FIPS was transferred from the city to a nonprofit organization. In 1995, we realized that we were reaching a plateau related to our existing facilities. So we came up with a three-phase master plan now initially, it was focused on such things as improving our visitor amenities and increasing the visitor stay time. Originally, we were not focused on green buildings. In fact, we didn't know what they were. But in 1999, we heard about this new thing called LEED. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And basically, it's about designing buildings that are very energy efficient, water efficient, and are healthy places for people to live and work. And the more we learned about it, the more we said, you know, this makes sense. We care about the environment. Why shouldn't our buildings reflect our values? So we went on to build the first LEED certified visitor center in a public garden anywhere in the world. There were three projects that had been done under Richard's leadership and one after the other, they have been landmark projects, national and international landmark projects that have brought people here from all around the world to look at what one can achieve in conservatories towards energy and water and environmental effectiveness. I remember when the Welcome Center was being built, and I walked down there one morning when they were installing the gray tiles in the cafe. And I looked at the box that the worker was taking the tiles out of, and I noticed that it said that it was made in another country. And I was really surprised, because in LEED, I thought you're supposed to use local products to avoid all the transportation energy costs related to shipping products from around the world. So I called up one of the people on the project, and I said, why are we using tile from another country? And he said, well, we already got that point. I said, wait a minute, that's not why we're doing this. We're not just doing this just to get points. We're doing this because we think this is the right thing to do. And from that moment on, we started to look at everything we did and said, why stop with the building? Let's look at everything and let's try to be as efficient and as green as we possibly can. Sustainability runs through the entire organization. It's not just a lead plaque when you walk in the building. It's everything that FIPS does. Our Tropical Forest Conservatory is the most energy efficient conservatory in the world, thanks to the number of strategies that we employed, such as extensive venting and earth tubes and fogging systems. It's always cooler inside than outside, and it uses virtually no energy to do that. We are able to recycle everything and use light and air to cool and light up the place without having to turn to electricity. 
It's really using nature to live well and not harming nature in the process. The Center for Sustainable Landscapes is actually going to be our education, administration, and research facility. We're designing the building to meet the living building challenge, which means it'll be zero net energy and zero net water on an annual basis. Over the course of a year, this building will produce more energy than it uses through the use of photovoltaics, wind, and geothermal energy. But it's also important for us to minimize the amount of energy we use by installing a robust building envelope and taking advantage of natural daylight and natural ventilation. We're using constructed wetlands to treat our sanitary waste and we're also using a series of systems to capture stormwater on site through rain gardens, a lagoon system, as well as permeable paving and rain tanks underground. The key to designing a high performance green building is to use the facilitated integrative design approach. Without an integrated process, it's not possible to build something that is cutting edge and certainly something that is trying to set a standard for the future, like the Center for Sustainable Landscapes is. In many respects, an integrated design process makes for a far more exciting process as well as a more exciting product. Do you have a weather station? Any project that's looking at those sustainable goals needs to be able to pull everybody together and set a kind of common purpose of some sequence of charrettes early on to get everybody to be on the same page. And if the client is nudging the team to think out of the box, to really do innovative work, which this client was, I think you get the best out of an integrated design charrette. We had a number of staff involved in the Shret to provide information as to how we would use the building and all the design team was there to understand our feedback and really be able to create a building that would be of great use to us. For us, it's very important to think about how do we integrate this building into the landscape in an ecologically and environmentally sensitive way. I think I can speak for the entire staff when I say that we are so excited about this project and about moving into the Center for Sustainable Landscapes. We just really want to inspire people, both in Pittsburgh and across the nation, that you can do a project like this, you can do it on a budget, you can do it in a beautiful way, and also you don't have to skimp. The Center for Sustainable Landscapes has all the modern day amenities that you could ever want, and yet it literally has as much impact on the environment as a flower. We're developing many new collaborative research programs with local universities. In fact, we've offered our building to them to study and to use as a lab. We also realize that while we have great green building talent in our region, no one is focusing on the landscape, and that is where we think we could add great value. FIPS inspires us so that we can look at them and say, wow, that's a great example. We might not be able to do exactly what they're doing, but we can do something similar. The Center for Sustainable Landscapes will be one of the greenest buildings in the world, and we think that it's really important for us to be leading by example. A recent statistic I heard said that if everyone were to live like we do in the United States, it would take seven planets worth of resources to do that. Well, that's obviously not possible. So we need to be smarter. We need to be smart about the way we live and the way we build and operate our buildings. We believe that our role at Phipps is to try and discover the most environmentally friendly way to interact with nature and then share it with people. And that's exactly what we've been doing. One person really can make a difference because then you can inspire other people, the people around you, your friends, to be living in the same way. And I think that's one of Phipps' messages is do everything you can to be as green as possible because it does make a difference. <laughs>